Hi, this is Phil Chandler on a sunny day towards the end of September 2016. I'd just like to talk to you for a short time about some important aspects of top bar hive design, just in case you want to build your own or modify an existing hive. Right now in this area it's ivy season and as you can see the bees are busy bringing in all the nectar and pollen they can find for their winter stores. You can see on this hive that there's three entrances towards one end at the front and there's a similar arrangement at the back, so the entrances at the back at the other end. So that when the hive is rotated, the entrances appear to be in the, exactly the same place as far as the bees are concerned. And this is important when you do swarm control. It's a, it's a useful way of, uh, way of doing artificial swarming to rotate the hive, which I'll talk to you about in some other video. The important aspect of this is that though there is a space between the entrances and the end of the hive. So now we're looking at the inside of the same hive and you can see here's the gap I was talking about. There's the end wall of the hive, this is the first follower board. And the reason for this gap here is twofold. Number one, I can put a feeder in here if I would choose to. Uh, and the access to the feeder would be through the hole which is drilled in the follower board right there. So that's one reason. The other reason is that I want to be able to see very quickly and easily at any time what's going on in this hive towards the entrance. Now if I put the camera down there you can see the bees coming in and out of the entrance, I think, and there's their comb right there. So I can see quite clearly what they're doing. They're building comb and they're going about their business filling up that comb with pollen and nectar. So that gives me a very quick view inside that end of the hive and at the other end of the hive here's the other follower board which I can likewise move away very quickly and easily I can look inside and I can see the, the, the bees going about their business at this end so the reason for two follower boards very clear and simple is that I can see both ends of the colony very quickly and easily without disturbing the bees on the top here I've got a, a standard uh, feeder, one of the types of feeder that has a, a tank one side and bee access the other side. There's no food in there at the moment but as you can see there's a slot. I made a slot in one of the top bars so that the bees, here, here are the bees right here, the bees can come up into the feeder and take food down. It's not in use at the moment because there's plenty of food around outside and I need to feed them. You notice that I have a hinged roof on this hive. That's for a very simple reason that it's a lot easier to flip up a roof like this than it is to lift one off. And that just makes life easier for the beekeeper. It also provides a, a bit of a barrier. So when you're working here behind the hive, the bees flying in at the front um, are confronted with a vertical wall. As you can see, if I come back around here, and that kind of stops them flying directly into your face. Um, the bees are very occupied at the moment, so they're not interested in what I'm doing particularly. But it does provide that kind of buffer against the um, against the flying bees coming back. Now, I've removed already the insulation from this hive. Normally, this hive would have insulation on top of the top bars. Um, it hasn't right now, but it should have, and I'll be putting that back very shortly. The purpose of the insulation is to retain um, heat in the hive, obviously, but also to keep heat out of the hive. If you live in a hot climate, you don't want heat penetrating the roof uh, and the top bars and warming up the interior beyond the point where the bees can really cope with it. So it's, it's both keeping heat in and heat, heat out, depending on the season, your location and the time of year. But the, the main purpose of it really is to stabilise the interior environment of the hive. It's very important to bees to have a stable in environment inside their hive in terms of humidity and in terms of temperature. And they can only do that if they can seal themselves in and really take control of that space. And so you will find that between top bars there will be a thin line of propolis where they've sealed up I'm not going to open it now because these bees are busy and I don't particularly want to disturb them. But you will find that there's a fine line of propolis between each pair of 
top bars and they, they attempt, they do their very best to seal themselves in in order to take, take control of that internal um, environment. So help them along by providing the best possible conditions for that. Okay, let's look at the legs. The uh, legs are held on by bolts. Make sure you use bolts, not wood screws. Wood screws are not up to the job. Bolts straight through the sides. That'll hold the thing together and make sure nothing unpleasant happens. Uh, make sure the angle of your legs is such that the hive is inherently stable. They should extend beyond the width of the hive. As you can see here, legs extend considerably wider than the hive body itself. This ensures that nothing is going to tip this hive over. It takes a considerable effort to destabilize this hive and uh, it really shouldn't happen at all. Even, even with fairly large animal rubbing against it, which obviously you want to try and prevent anyway, but you know, even if it does, um, then they're, they're going to have a real difficulty turning that hive over, which makes this probably the most stable beehive, uh, apart from the ones that are actually kind of cemented into the ground, which I have and seen. There are blocks on this particular hive, there are blocks sticking out here so that when you open the lid, uh, the lid rests in a just slightly over vertical position. That's quite important. You want to make sure your lid is stable in that position because uh, you don't want it falling on your fingers and you definitely don't want it falling off the other side bar down here this is the probably the best design of top bar that we've come up with uh, as you can see it's got a v shape um, fairly shallow v doesn't have to be uh, a very deep v although it can be i don't have a problem with that but this works very well provides a nice surface for the bees to attach their comb to um, there's a cutout at each end. If anything, that cutout could be doing a little bit uh, deeper, leaving a shallower tab, because the um, the tab here could be used in a national hive. So you could put one of these bars in between combs on a national hive, and the thickness of that tab there uh, means that it would sit down in between the frames in the recess. Uh, I think it's a little bit on the thick side actually on the, this particular top bar but uh, you get the idea anyway. So the other thing that does is when it's in the hive in its correct position, which is like that, the cutaway here, this, this step here, means that the, the bar can't slide off the hive when it's not actually in use, which is kind of useful too. These bees are really working hard on the ivy, which is good to see. means they're going to have plentiful stores in their combs and uh, probably won't need any feeding. I do get asked quite a lot about why the sides of the top bar hive are sloped. Now there are actually several reasons for that. First of all, as they're sloped towards the ground they get much less direct exposure to the sun which means that the sides stay reasonably cool which enhances the process of evaporation and condensation because uh, evaporation um, happens obviously with the help of heat from the brood area. Condensation requires the surface to be cooler than the body in, uh, temperature inside the hive so keeping the sides cool is important. Now this time of year the sun's quite low in the sky and that means that the sides this particular side is getting a fair bit of sun but it's not a strong sun uh, it's not strong heat and so it's not really going to make a lot of difference but in the summer when the sun's high in the sky the sides hardly get any sun at all which is important at that time of year because oh. that's when most of the nectar is going to come in um, another reason for slope sides is to do with comb stability now I'm not going to take a comb out of here right now but I will take there's a an unused follower board here which I'll take out just to demonstrate the principle. Um, this is obviously a follower board and so this would be the shape of the comb that the bees make in this hive. Now the important aspect here is that when you are handling comb it is very important that you don't obviously break it off and this shape, the trapezoid shape with a large attached area at the top and a much smaller uh, amount of mass at the bottom is inherently more stable than if it was a complete rectangle. Well, when you're t when you're turning ha uh, comb over to look at the other side, which I can only do uh, awkwardly with one hand, but it, you rotate it in this plane. 
Yeah? So if I'm doing it like that, I'm rotating it, keeping it always in the vertical plane. And that means that you won't get any, well, hopefully not, get any break-offs. You, you can build hives with, with straight sides. You can build um, what they call the Tanzanian style of top bar hive with straight sides, but vertical sides. Uh, but personally, I found that the comb nearest the sides in those hives tends to get mould on it over the winter, whereas in this shape, th that doesn't seem to pretty much never happens. So that's maybe another aspect worth looking at. Perhaps I should also mention too that the reason that my top bars are 17 inches long is that that is the length of the top bar of the British National Hive and that was a very deliberate move on my part because I wanted to have some uh, compatibility between the two systems. Obviously you can't put a frame directly into a top bar hive because of its shape but you can use these top bars in a national hive should you choose to do so. It's actually a good way of getting straight comb to start your hive is to put some of these top bars in between already drawn frames in a national hive and you, obviously to do that you need bars that are 17 inches long. Now if you're American or you use a Langstroth hive then you'll want to make your top bars 19 inches long most likely because that's the size of the Langstroth hive top bar. So that's it for now, that's some important aspects of top bar hive design, I hope that's helpful and any questions please go ahead and ask and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.